we've got our player moving, we've got him jumping. The problem is that the camera doesn't follow him, so he can literally run right off the screen. It's time for us to make a camera follow script. Now there's three ways to fix this problem, with each one getting a little fancier, but also a little more complicated, so you'll have to pick what works best for you. What we can do here is simply take our camera, which is currently set to a static point on the map, and make it a child of our main character. You'll notice that it now shows up underneath him. This is a simple and elegant solution that, as you can see, actually works really quite nicely. The camera now quite literally follows me wherever I go. Parenting the camera to the player is an elegant solution in some cases, but if you have a player who can topple end over end or fall over or anything like that, you get some interesting problems. I've made my player into a circle here just to demonstrate this really obviously. Now if I move, you'll notice that my player is in fact moving. He's making his way across the platform. The uh, problem is that the camera's rotating as my player rotates, which creates a very unwanted effect. So let's take a look at our second method of getting the camera to follow the player, which involves following the player's position, but not rotation. I'm going to begin by creating a new script. So you can right-click down in your assets, go to Create, and almost at the very top, C-sharp script. We're going to call this one Camera Follow. So you can click on your camera and bring the script right onto it. Then we can head into the script itself. Now once you're in your script, we're actually not going to be using the start or the update methods for this one, so you can get rid of those altogether. What we are going to do, first of all, is just create a reference to the thing that our camera is going to be following, which is our player. We're going to make this one a public transform, and we're going to call it player transform. Now remember, in Unity, the transform is a component we've put on our player, and it tracks things like his position, his rotation, and his scale. In this case, we're particularly interested in his position because we want the camera to move to the same position as our player. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to create a new method. You'll remember that we got rid of the start and update methods. And in fact, a really common mistake that people will make when doing a camera script is to create a update method and use that as the place where they're going to do all of their updating. The problem is that much of our player movement comes out of the update method, which runs constantly. And if our camera is updating its position at the exact same time as the player, we can get some problems in jittery movement. So what we're going to do instead is make this a late update, which means it still happens constantly each frame. The only thing is it's going to happen after the update. So it'll allow our player to move and then have the camera react afterwards. Now all we're going to do here is make it so that the transform.position in this case, I haven't specified which transform position, but because this script is on our camera, it automatically will cause the camera's position to be equal to, we're going to put player transform dot position. So at this point, our camera's position will constantly be set to be equal to the player's position. Back in Unity now, you'll notice that there's this new box here wondering what is our player's transform. And for that one, you can actually just grab your player and drag him inside, and it will constantly update. Some of you may have already guessed at a problem that's going to occur once I hit play. Here you'll notice that my screen is pure blue, which seems wrong. However, if you look at our scene, you'll notice that the camera is actually right inside of our character, staring into the blue behind him. That's because our camera script is working. It's actually set it to be exactly equal to our player. The problem is we actually don't want our camera to be at exactly where the player is. We want it to go to his position, but then to zoom back a little bit. And right now our zoom is done through our Z axis. So let's head back to our script. And we're going to create an offset now, which is just going to make it so that our camera is always offset a little bit from our player. We can make this one public. We're going to make it a vector 3. Remember, vector 3 just has an x, y, and z value. So if you wanted to, you could make the camera be just a little bit above or below the character, a little to the side. This vector 3 we'll just call offset. So now all we have to do to make that offset take effect is down here, we want our camera's position to be equal to the player's position plus the offset. You can save that. And back in Unity, we can give this a try. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my camera and actually move it so that it's directly on my player, like the script was originally doing. 
However, I'd like it to be zoomed out about as much as it is right now. So I'll look over here and I notice that at the moment, my z is set to a minus 5. So down here in the offset, I'm going to use that value, minus 5. Now when I hit play, the camera moves to 5 meters off of the player, and it follows him quite nicely as he moves. No jittery effects or anything like that. So now you've got a nice working camera movement. It is going pretty well. Um, the only thing is, it's a little bit snappy. You may notice that it's a little bit jerky, especially when going back and forth, and it just makes things feel a tiny bit choppy and not quite as smooth as something like a traditional Mario Bros or something like that. So for those of you who are up for a little bit of more complex coding, we'll show you how to fix that. To make this happen, we're going to head back down into our late update function and actually start work above where we set our current transform position. Down here, we're going to make a new variable. We're going to make this one a vector 3, so it's going to have an x, y, and z value. And we're going to call this one desired position. Now our desired position is actually just this stuff down here. It's the position of the player plus our offset. So you can literally just grab that with a little command X and then command V paste it up top. We now have our desired position. The problem is though if we set this constantly every frame then as I go back and forth you'll notice that snappy thing. So what we want to do is we want to smooth this out a little. So we'll create another vector 3. This one is going to be what's called smoothed position. Now our smoothed position is going to be similar to the other, but we're going to try something new called a vector 3 dot lerp. Now lerp means linear interpolation, and essentially what it does is it just smooths between two values. So instead of going immediately and sharply to one, it'll create a smooth transition between the two. So what we're going to do here is we'll take our current position, transform dot position, and we want to smooth out the difference between our current position and the desired position. Now, the next value that this asks for is just, well, how much smoothing do you want to happen? Zero would mean that it would just stay in our current position. One would have it snap perfectly to the desired position. And we don't want either of those. We want to go somewhere in between. And actually, I want to make this a really nice, smooth one. But I also want to try out some different values when we get in Unity. So we're going to actually use a new variable here. We're going to call this one um, smooth speed. And I'll put a semicolon at the end here. I can now go up to the top. You'll notice it doesn't like smooth speed. That's because we have not told it what that is yet. So up here we'll just make a public. And this one is going to be a float because it's a number with a decimal between 0 and 1 called smooth speed. Now for now I'm going to actually set this value. I'm going to make it 0.125f which is quite small, but it should create a lot of smoothing this way. So now you'll notice that the squiggly line went away here because it now knows what that is. One last thing I want to add to my smooth position, which will now look at the current position, the position of the player, and it will smooth them out. But I also want to multiply this by time dot delta time. It's just a way of smoothing things out so that it happens at a nice even pace. All that's left now is for me to make it so that the transform position of the camera is equal to our smoothed position. We can now head back over into Unity. All right, so at the moment, you'll notice that my smooth speed is incredibly slow. Um, it is really nice and smooth. We've lost all of that jittering. But <laughs> it takes a long time to update, and my player can actually still outrun it. And so what I'm going to do is head over to my smooth speed, and let's try out a different value. Like, let's double it to 250. Now, as I'm moving around, it's moving a little better, but you'll notice it still isn't quite keeping up with my player. Though, as I get to the very edge, you'll notice that it does zoom ahead a little bit in order to make this work better. But that still feels just a little awkward to me. Let's try 0.5. We now have a much smoother movement happening. I'm not getting away from it so much. The screen's updating a lot nicer. So you can go ahead and play around a bit with those values until you get one that's just the way you like it.